Welcome to the Grand Strand Weekly Web Chat. It's the final week of the regular season for all schools that are not in that Class 4A rank. Most of the playoff picture for the most part is set, but there are a few key games to talk about. Two panelists that we bring in. This is, what, 11 weeks now of talking high school football here. We appreciate you two for coming in uh, each and every week. This is Ian Guerin of the Sun News and Matt Paris of ESPN Myrtle Beach. Not to bore you guys too much, but let's just get right into it. No small talk here. Let's go to uh, the games that happened last week. Some of the results from week number nine of the high school football season. As we go through it, I think we should talk about it. Starting with this first one, Dillon 24, Loris 14. For the most part, three quarters. If they, if they play a game that's three quarters long, Loris would have won this game, right? Right. I mean, we were, we were both out there for a little bit. You were out there for a little bit. I was out there for the whole thing. I mean, Loris really had that game in control. They were doing everything they wanted defensively for, for basically, you know, three quarters and eight minutes. And then uh, Dylan went down, scored the touchdown, got the two point conversion. And that's where that final score comes up. But Loris was, uh, you know, they even had a chance to tie the game there at the end as well. Matt shocked that D Loris could keep it close with Dylan. I think that was one of the, uh, that was the score across the area, doesn't matter, Grand Strand or PD, that people were like, wow, this is an eyebrow raiser. Well, we came in knowing that Loris had a good defense, and they showed it definitely for three quarters. And I, I know I was trying to get in touch with Ian on, the, on my show, and he was just like, dude, this game's too good. I can't. I, so I'm, I'm dying there in the studio wishing I could see it. But, uh, yeah, scores coming in, and it was just like, what is going on here? But exciting game. I had assistant coaches from Timberland texting me, trying to figure out what the score was. I'm like, how would you get my number? And they're like, we went on your website. I'm like, Jesus. All right. Other results from week number nine. Lakeview knocking off Green Sea Floyd 48-25. St. James over North Myrtle Beach 24-19. I wanted to see North Myrtle pick up that region win, but they couldn't do it. Any thoughts on that game? Yeah, I think they're going to have to wait till next year. They got Myrtle Beach this week. They're, they're effectively uh, are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs already, so they got one more game. Uh, and, and then their season is done. But that doesn't mean that North Myrtle can't do some nice things. I mean, they've got a running back who's, who's already over 1,000 yards in uh, seven games, you know, missed a couple with injury. So they've got some nice things going. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to be, a, you know, one of the better teams in the area next year. It's just now they have to wait. Matt, tell me about St. James. I mean, they just picked up, what was that, their second region win of the season. They're now 2-2 two and two in region play. They're playing Sockesty. Sockesty doesn't have much to play for, but on the other hand, I think St. James has something to play for now. St. James does, and I mean, you think about Sockesty, they've got the, the undefeated season to work with. That's always something to play for, but St. James able to overcome the, the turnover bug that's been biting them all year, and then North Myrtle Beach, obviously, uh, playing in that Region 3A. Uh, injuries are going to creep up along the line, and that just came back to bit North Myrtle Beach, and St. James is able to get away with one. I, I think it's a great win for, for the Sharks. Uh, yeah, playoff scenario, is there a chance that, I know we're jumping the gun here, but St. James, if they do pull out this if, upset? If, if they win, I, I think they've got a very good chance of uh, going in as a four seed. Obviously, there's no guarantee out of that region with the four seed, but they, they have to probably get uh, that third win uh, because in Georgetown region in region play because uh, Georgetown goes to Wilson Thursday night. If Georgetown wins that game, they are automatically the third seed. Uh, St. James is going to need some help, but they do need the win over Sox. They, they have a lot to play for. And speaking of Georgetown, uh, last week Myrtle Beach defeated Georgetown 18 to nothing. Georgetown playing a lot of that uh, without their top running back and their top wide receiver. It's but, you know, their defense held them in check with that nice win. A game that was probably the most exciting game was the South Florence against Conway. It came down to a fourth down in overtime, and it might have looked like Mikhail Moody got over the goal line. I don't know if you guys got to see any of the replays for that, but it came down to really a goal line stand. And I guess, you know, 4A Region 6, we probably thought it would come down to this. Just you know, who could make the stop when it mattered the most? Yeah, I like the I like the uh, quote from the kid in the uh, Florence Morning News. Uh, you know, Buddy Lou Bajak wrote that one, and the kid said if if Mikhail Moody had sneezed any harder, he would have been into the end zone. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a, it was a tough one from Conway, but they're they're still alive for a first place uh, finish in that region. They're going to need some help from West Florence beating South next week, but you know they need to win their last two games. They get Carolina Forest next week. This week, they, they have to beat Sumter. I mean, they're, they're, they, they can't get away with, with losing their only region home game. All right, we'll, we'll get to that big matchup. That's one of our games of the week. I think we have a couple more results uh, from week number nine. Uh, we got that one, yeah. Carver's Bay, East Clarendon, 46-8. No surprise there. Aner over Mullins, 58-22. 
Matt, any thoughts on Aner? They're now what three and one in region play. It's yeah, good. three and one in region play. They're looking good. Obviously, Mullins is kind of uh, in a rebuilding year. They, them and uh, what was it, Walkmar or whatever. But they, uh, yeah, Aner's Aner's talented team. I like what they're doing. So wide open for them. It's, there's, they had a big matchup this week against Loris. Some of the other matchups from last week as we run through them. Sumter 37, Carolina Forest 15. That was disheartening because Carolina Forest actually had a halftime lead of, I think it was 15 to 8 or something uh, like yeah. that. So uh, to them to get blanked was, uh, it was kind of rough, but you know, I think that pretty much ends Carolina Forest's chances at a playoff run. Timberland over Andrews 40 to nothing and Marion knocking off Waccamaw. 30 to nothing. I don't think those two scores at the bottom there are much of a surprise. Just recapping the entire week nine. Any final thoughts before we start going ahead? Matt, you want to start? I was an exciting slate of games. I really enjoyed me. I, I didn't enjoy being in the studio and not being able to, to see <laughs> most of them, but uh, watching the scores come in and, and kind of seeing, you know, following the Twitter feeds and everything, seeing all the action as it unfolded. Lots of exciting finishes, some things yeah. maybe we didn't expect, and uh, why they play the games? Yeah, Dylan Loris, I think, was the highlight of the week. Yep. I, I would agree. That was that was a that was a fun one to be at. It seems like every week I end up at some blowout game. At, uh, <laughs> I've, I've only covered two games all year that have been decided by single digits. So uh, all these games of the week we have turn out to be blowouts. So it was it was it was refreshing to have a, a, a to be at a close one. That was a good one. I think you were at the Conway Myrtle Beach one. It was probably the other one that mm -hmm. was a close game. But we didn't think that Sockstein Myrtle Beach would be a blowout. Maybe in the other way. All right, let's look at this week's slate of games, starting with our games of the week. Both of them have uh, ties to the Grand Strand, as News 13 does a PD game of the week and Grand Strand game of the week every single week. We start with that top one. It's our PD game of the week technically, but it has Carver's Bay, which has ties to the Grand Strand. Two 8-1 and one teams. Both teams are undefeated when it comes to Class A Region 7 play. This is a really good one and a fun one because coaches on both of these sides are, I guess you would say, veterans. Uh, you got Bill Tate, who's back at Timminsville uh, for the first time after taking a long leave of absence. And then, uh, I guess, Carver's Bay, Nate Thompson. He's probably the most, I don't know if you've ever got to interview him, uh, Matt, but probably the most fun coach to talk to, <laughs> either PD or Grand Strand. Yeah. Ian, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, Nate, Nate's a fun one. I got him on the phone for a few minutes this afternoon. Hard and, to get on the phone, yeah. though. Well, I'll tell you what, they, <laughs> they load him up. He was responsible for two classes at once. He was he, he was worried about walking away and calling me. He didn't want the kids to burn the, the, the classroom down. <laughs> so, uh, But yeah, I spent a few minutes on the phone with him today. He pointed out something really interesting to me that I would not have guessed, uh, you know, just going back, they have more state titles in the history of Carver's Bay than they do with region titles. They've got two state titles. They've only won the region one time. So if they go beat Timminsville, uh, Timminsville on Friday night at home, obviously a big game. That's, that's something else that those kids have never been a part of. Yeah, I, I know this is not, you know, two schools that we normally talk about here on the Grand Strand Weekly Web Chat, but any thoughts on this game, Matt? I mean, it's an exciting matchup. Two teams, uh, eight and one, coming in, and uh, like Ian was just saying, it's kind of an interesting, uh, uh, you know, stat there. but. I, I like Carver's Bay in this one there at home. I think it should be an exciting one. It should be a close one, I think. I, I think that Timminsville, I mean, these are both teams that I think can both run and pass the ball. They like to run the ball. Both teams, Timminsville for sure likes to run the ball. But Carver's Bay this year, they're doing something with their quarterbacks that they haven't really done in Carver's Bay history. Deshaun Aiken can actually throw the ball. He's got a decent arm. He's got a lot of – he's got some height over there with yeah. the receivers. I believe both of them are brothers. Yeah, Shaquan and uh, Shayton Durant. Durant, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they're still going to run the ball. You know, they're still going to run the ball. But they can throw the ball, and they're throwing it over the top. They got that smash play working. We, we kind of diagrammed that out on the blitz last week. Um, so I, I see just the balanced offense of Carver's Bay being too much for Timminsville to handle. And just look at the wins on, on Carver's Bay's resume, Georgetown and St. James. And both of the, I think both of those wins were come from behind wins. Yeah, they, they, they came from behind. Their only loss of the year was in the season opener, Johnsonville. Since then, uh, you know, I wrote it down here to make sure I mentioned it. There, there are eight wins since that season opening loss. Average score is 35 to 9. I mean, that's, that's pretty ridiculous right there. I mean, they're, they're getting uh, that balanced offense, but they're, it's big plays, both running and throwing the ball, which in the past, they've never really had a quarterback, you know, in the 12, 13 years of that program to be able to throw like that, have the targets that he's got, and it, it keeps defenses from knowing what the heck's coming. And it's kind of strange when you go out to this guy's practice because you're like, where's the rest of your team? You're like, there, there's like 20 guys there on the Cla team. You're Class like, A football Class is a best right there. Yeah, no, you're, you're used to going to the Myrtle Beaches and Socasties and St. James of the world where, you know, they 
kind of, they don't have that many numbers, but they have numbers. And then you go out there, it's 22 people, and they're and you're like. I, I think their official roster right now, they've got 26 guys on their roster. Wow. I mean, that's what, I mean, their, their star quarterback is also, it's their you know, star defensive their back. star defensive player. He's got two defensive touchdowns to go, uh, you know, with something like 15 offensively. Uh, they're, you know, I think they've got a defensive end who's a, a running back, Devin Cutno. Uh, another one of their wide receivers is their top linebacker. I mean, that, it, it's they have really good athletes. Carver's Bay uh, has always had that. Now they've got five or six guys who could be playing in college, you know, small college ball somewhere, uh, all coming together at the same time. It, it's it's a nice group of players for them, and it's got them thinking that they could they can make a run for a state title. I got one of them that could play at South Carolina and Clemson. No, yeah. that, that lineman. Right. Um, all right, the other game of the week that we're looking at, Sumter and Conway. When you look at these records, you're like, man, why did we pick this game? But I think <laughs> we all know why, because if you look at the standings right now, Sumter's beaten South Florence, and Sumter's 2-1 and one in region play. Right. So right, technically right now they're on top of the region, and Conway, they're fighting for their lives right here. This is kind of a, a, a is it a must-win game for both teams? Uh, probably not so much a must win because Sumter does have that uh, head-to-head uh, tiebreaker over South. Uh, Conway also has a you know pretty down-and-out Carolina Forest team next next week. Plus Conway right now is is beating everybody I believe still beating everybody in the points, which would help them for the tiebreaker as well. Just you know via who they played in the in the non-region schedule. Same time again, they're playing at home. It's their only region home game. They 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 need to win this game to prove that they can when they need to. You know, they, there have been times this year where they, they haven't really done that. And I think this is a, a good opportunity for them that if they are going to go into the playoffs and make anything happen, it, it, they they need to prove to themselves in this game that they can. Sumter is three and six. If you want to make noise in the playoffs, you got to beat a three and six team, right, Matt? Absolutely, and and. I, like I'm kind of with Ian. I don't know if it's a must-win, but I think as far as your, uh, you know, morale and that you can win a victory like that at home and kind of wrap up, uh, you know, the region and things like that, that is very important. You know, they've kind of had an up-and-down year. Conway has uh, Chuck Jordan's squad, obviously squeaking one out last week, and then uh, the close loss to Myrtle Beach. Things like that are are coming to a head at this point, and I think they need to be able to take down Sumter to show that, you know this is who we are and we can go into the playoffs and make something happen. I still don't know how to look at this 4A Region 6 and be like, you know, who has the edge right now? Because you got to think, I guess South Florence has the edge right now. Well, and I think, I think they've got the edge because they also play West Florence and I think they beat West something like, like eight, eight or nine yeah. times in a row. They've kind of got their number a little bit. So I think it, it puts them in the driver's seat, at least for now. But I mean, outside of Carolina Forest, every other team can still win the region. The other four are still alive to win the region with, with no more than two games left. This is actually Sumter's last region game uh, because there's only five teams. They'll go out of, out of region next week for the, the season finale. So this is big for them because this is their last chance to make an impression. I think we can say this. Conway's probably the favorite to win this game. Correct. So let's just say they win this game. They'll be, what, two and one mm -hmm. in region play. South, they're, uh, who they got? The, they're out of, out of, they're uh, out, of, out of conference. So they're two and one. Week. Let's say West beats Carolina Forest, like they, they, they probably will, um, two and one there. Then it comes down to South and West that play next week. That'll, right. One of those teams will be three and one. Right. And then you have Conway, Carolina Forest, one of those teams will be three and one. So well, Co oh, Carolina Forest is one and two right now. Yeah, yeah well, I'm saying, uh, sorry, Conway wins that game, right. it'll be three right. and one. Right, right, right. So it basically comes down to if West beats South and Conway would win the region <laughs> is what we're doing. Right. Kind of yeah. Correct. Factoring in here. Correct. But if South South basically controls their own destiny is what we're trying to say. Right. Right. Everybody else needs help. South can South uh, wins uh, next week and they win the region. Sorry, I'm, I'm going through <laughs> this and hopefully you're talking home. through it yeah, with you at home. Thank you. <laughs> Other games from week number. It's a double digit week now. We're in week ten. October yeah. twenty what sixth will be the high school football week number ten. Andrews at Lake Marion. Nothing really enticing here. It's a little further away. Andrews, they're, they're all in the playoffs. So, yeah. you know, they're fighting for playoff spots there. Laura said, hey, no, this one's a fun one. This is actually a battle for second place in uh, 2A Region 8. Both teams are 3-1 and one at this point. Matt, I mean, can Aner, this, this is kind of would be Aner's statement saying, we beat someone that's really good. Yeah, Aner can put up a lot of points that we've seen in the last couple weeks. But Loris, I think, Saw how close they got last week against a really good Dylan team. I don't see them letting Aner take this one away, 
take this one away from him. It's a different type of offense, yep. though. I mean, you have Dylan that's going to, quite frankly, just run, try to run it down your throat. Right. And then you have Ainer that's going to try to slice and dice you at different angles. What do you make of this game? Right. Dylan was using a defensive tackle, basically, as a running back in the second half. And that kid was big. Uh, what was his name? Joe Blue. Uh, out, of, yeah. out of Dylan. And his brother Anthony is the is the starter, but uh, Joe came in and was really the one who who did the damage. As far as as far as Ainer, they got they got three senior running backs, and, and all of them put up a lot of yards. Uh, all of them can can take it to the house at any play. They're going to go around the edge. They're going to run up the middle. Uh, they're they're probably not going to throw a ton, even though the quarterback threw for like 220 last week, uh, because it's the same thing. In a lot of these other games where you expect a team to kind of blow it out. You need to control the clock, and, and it's something that they are going to do because that's their strength. That's, that's what they've built uh, this whole offense around is, is moving the chains. I mean, they're happy with a four-yard run. They do it three times, it's a first down. They do it ten times, it's a touchdown. I mean, they're, they're, they're happy doing that. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what I expect Ainer to try to do. Are they going to be able to do it? I'm not so sure because, you know, that Loris team is fired up after that game last week. I think Loris obviously is a favorite. <coughs> I, I pick Loris to win, and I'm guessing we're kind of – all on that same boat, but I think it make Ainer keeps it close at home in a big game. Carolina Forest at West Florence. We've kind of talked about the 4A Region 6 picture. West Florence, the favorite there. Creek Bridge at Green Sea Floyds. I think Green Sea is going to pick up a win there, yep. so that'll be a good one. Dylan taking on Waccamaw. I feel bad for Tyron I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, Waccamaw. <laughs> you dealt the short end of the stick. Yeah, and that's going to be yeah. at home. Whew, that's not good. I remember, was it one of the schools had to play at King Street, had to play Timberland, and right. then come back the very next week and play them in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. I hope that didn't yeah. have to happen to walk them all here. Yeah, it could. <laughs> all right, throw over that uh, last little board here. We have three games left to talk about. North Myrtle taking on Myrtle Beach. I mean, this is, is Chocolate Wilson coming back? Maybe that's a big storyline in this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if he's, I think if they're, if it's a coin flip with him, I think they probably just wait. This game doesn't, doesn't mean anything for either team. You know, Myrtle Beach has already got second place locked up. Uh, North Myrtle's already already done with their season. I I don't think they're going to push him. And they've already got a blueprint for this. They did it with Everett Golson. You know, everybody was wanting to know, is he coming back week eight, week nine, week ten? And they're like, we don't know. We'll see. You know, they've got other guys that can they can play cornerback. And against a team like North Myrtle Beach that's why built on the it? run, well, exactly. Why why risk it? And if it takes an extra week. I mean, the kid isn't losing his college scholarship offers because of it. They're actually happier with him. They, they, they want him to be healthy. They don't want him to rush back into a season, and especially in a game that doesn't mean anything. Why risk it a la Jabo Lee last week? Right, right. And, you know, we saw that last one. His first run was seven yards. The second run, he fumbled the ball, got his knee twisted in the pile, and had to be picked up by two assistant coaches and carried off the field. And, and the people on the Dillon sidelines were, were heartbroken over watching this kid that they watched you know, uh, do so much for so long, be carried off, uh, carried off the field if he comes back. Now what happens to his college scholarship? I mean, that, those are things that go through high school coaches' minds. They're not going to risk a kid, especially in a game that doesn't matter. Exactly. All right, uh, the last two games, we'll let Matt, if you have any. That Thursday one's a pretty good one. We, we talked a little bit about Sox D St. James already. Georgetown at Wilson. Uh, Wilson's just a heartbreak team, but Georgetown's bitten by the injury bug. They're probably going to have at least one of those two guys back, you'd think. Do you, do you have an injury update there, Ian? Yeah, so. they were they were going to find out late last night, and I think it was just they were going to you know get on the bus, see how they were feeling. I mean, they had they have to pass the concussion test test first, uh, but also I mean if you haven't practiced and you haven't played in, in you know 10, 12 days, again, why risk some kid's health? Yeah, you know? and Georgetown Wilson, what do you make of that matchup? Anything? I think it's a good matchup. Again, Wilson, we, we, you never know what you're going to get, but Georgetown uh, wanted to wrap up that third place yeah. and uh, you know, kind of take away the question of, of who's that third place team in 3A. I think they go in there and get the win. Well, and I think the, I think the interesting thing about that, and it kind of it, it helps a lot of people, is that game being played Thursday night. If, if Wilson somehow, somehow wins that game, I think the St. James team on Friday is going to be a little more fired up because then if they turn oh, yeah. around and beat Soxty, they know 100% they're going to the playoffs, and it's something that doesn't happen very often at St. James. And St. James, I think they're going to be fired up anyway because yep. uh, big game. Yeah, they've been around what, eight or nine years. And right. how many times has St. James beaten Sacristy? Yeah, we have to go back and look at that. I'll, I'll I go think back. It happened one time when I was in school at Sacristy, and I maybe 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 one or two times. I'll have to go Do back. Do you remember all the way back then? <laughs> it was a while back. It was those oh, 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 three, oh, four that they split, something like that. So yeah. 
So it's been a while, been and, a while. and you know Soxie wants that perfect season, oh, the yeah. first perfect season in school. They're, yep. they're just making records. Doing yeah, it's it. every week. It's a new first for Soxie. Yep. They're having fun doing it, though. Yeah, and it's all because of David Bennett, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cats and dogs. Exactly. We're kidding. All right, thanks for watching the Grand Strand Weekly Web Chat. For Ian, Matt, I'm Jeff. We'll see you back. We're going to do this gonna, two more weeks, you say? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to dress up. Are we doing that? Halloween next week. Larry, Mo, Get ready Curly. for it. I like it. We'll see you then.